Mr. Sample Tutorial. First thing you're going to want to do, obviously, load it up. I'm using machine here. You can use any DAW that you like. It comes in VST2, VST3, and AU format, audio unit format for Macintosh, Logic Pro, and all of that. So I'm going to load up the VST3 version right here, Mr. Sample. And there we go. What a beauty in it. To get a sample into Mr. Sample right here, we need to navigate to this drop sample icon. See this needle dropping right there? That's where you drop the sample. You can also right click it, but you can grab a sample from your DAW or from your desktop and drop it into here. Now, the quickest way to set it up is to work with samples that are already loop optimized. But just to show you the editing functions here, we're going to go with a slightly more challenging task. Grabbing the edge to your left and pulling it is going to change your start point, and grabbing the right edge will change the end point. So the goal here is to grab one or two bars. That's what I recommend for drum breaks too, because whatever we're working with here is what is going to slice up into 16 pieces. So with a shorter drum break, you can get more granular with it. So we're going to try to get one bar out of this. And we also have at our disposal the zoom tools and this scrolling tool on this panel right beneath. Let's zoom in, get a real good look. Set the start point, hop over to the end point. And here's key. You need to set up how many beats this region is right now. So one bar would be four beats. And it seems like we grabbed a lot more than one bar for now. Let's see if we set it to 16, if it sounds better. Oh yeah, so we, so we got a clue right there. Let's set the range up to play all 16 chops in here. All right, well, that's where we need to be right there. We trimmed our sample accurately enough and we can play it back now, but take notice of this. It's very time stretched, which might be desired, but in this case, I want to just lock it in to the original BPM. So this is just one bar. I'll set it to four. Then we get our original BPM, which is 76.64, which sounds about right. And it's going to play back at the tempo of your DAW. If you need to bump up the volume, you got your input gain up here. And we also have the compressor and saturation. Now you can start playing around with the sound. You can set the grain size. If you set it to a very low grain size, it actually works pretty well with percussive sounds and drums and things like that. If you're using it on other samples, you're going to notice these minimal grains that cause some cool glitchy artifacts. You can try playing it back at different pitches. And as you can notice, it always stays on time. You can try the different sample modes here. Add some vinyl crackle. If you let it go and press it again, it will re-trigger. So it's not locked to the grid of your DAW. You can play it a little bit off if you want to get the timing that suits your needs. But if you don't let go of the key and press another one, it will keep going through these chops and change to the new pitch that you're playing. Let's take a look at the pattern sequencer down here. These are all the chops in sequential order. So when it has a shape like this, it means it's going to play chop one, two, three, four, five, six, all in the natural order. But if I were to rearrange these, like for example, it's going to play all the chops backwards now. You can also just paint something randomly into here and see what happens. Now, if I like this pattern, but I would like it to start over here instead. I want this to be the one I can use the rotate buttons. And I can ro shift this whole pattern around. If I only want the first eight chops, I can change the range. And now I got this little loop here. We also have a pitch per step, and that's going to shift this chop 
between minus 12 and plus 12 semitones. So if we pull all of these down, you can have all types of fun with that. And if you don't really feel like drawing it in like this, all you need to do is really use a random function. Now the random one is gonna completely random every single step, like so. Random two will randomize the chops in pairs instead. And of course, if you want to change just one part of it, you can. Add some vinyl crackle. We get very dirty like that. And if you like this pattern, but you want to experiment with something else, we actually have 12 different patterns to move with. So the lowest octave on your keyboard, typically C1 up to A1, switches the pattern. So on pattern one, we have our pattern save right there. But we can move on to another one and do another randomization there. And then we can seamlessly switch between the two on, on the go if we want to. Like that, you know what I'm saying? It's highly playable. You can really mangle your samples with this. Let's try another sample. Sounds something like that. And this is just one note. Funny trick for playing rhythmical melodies and things like that. This sample right here has some empty space right there. So if some of these chops end up landing on there, we're gonna have some. Notice how we can manipulate the beats of it to tell Mr. Sample that it's double or half the speed or anything in between. So it's gonna time stretch it in different increments. The choppiness, the warble of the grain stretch is gonna be totally dependent on your sample. So if you have something with a lot of low frequencies like a bass sound, for example, that's how you get that Mad Lib warbly bass, you know what I'm saying? Other times it doesn't sound too good. You might wanna mask it out, do some filtering, some EQing, blend it in with some reverb or some things like that. For example, with this one. It's a little bit too choppy for my taste. I'm gonna drop another drum sample in to show you how you can manipulate the timing of it and get that nasty time stretch effect. So yeah, I load up a pre-made pattern here in machine. And I'm gonna delete all of this stuff. See what the original BPM is, I wanna Drop it in at that same BPM. Nice, now I'm gonna load up an instance of Mr. Sample right here. Now all I need to do is drop it right in there. For some reason, it remembers all this uh, space at the end when you export a sample from here, but we can just lock it in. And we know that's just one bar. Let's see what happens if we, that's right, we locked it in. Now we should be able to play this drum break. Set the range up. Find a sweet spot with the grain size. All right, so we got the original 176 BPM in here, but what happens if we tell Mr. Sample that this is actually two bars? It's gonna half the speed quadruple it, we're gonna get some even more extreme time stretch. Or we could go the other way around, tell it that it's half a bar. And we double the speed. Of course, it's also adherent, obliging to the tempo. So if we pull this down to 50, that's what we're gonna get. Or if we want it to be a little bit faster. And we can play it at different pitches. And drum breaks, short drum breaks is really fun to just do some random stuff with. See, right now, here's another example. In my head, it makes sense that this part right here is the one. 
So I'm just gonna scoot that over there. And we got a completely new pattern just like that. Works great with percussion, drum breaks, any sample, remixing your old beats. Let's get another pattern going. Now here I wanna make a fill, so I'll find a snare. And make this cool little pitch climb. And of course you can record all this stuff. What you do essentially is just record that MIDI notes and you're recording that switch. And this pitch right here is relative to whatever note you're playing. So if we would scoot this up, You see, wallons, and the effects are pretty straightforward. One more thing I'm gonna show you is that if you're working with a range like this, for example, the rotate buttons will rotate only the parts, only the chops within that range. All right, and that's about it. Now let me show you how it works when you throw in just a loop that's already optimized. Now we don't really need to worry about setting these start and end points up. All we need to do is set the amount of beats in here, which is 16 at the point. Let's pull the BPM down. See what the original sounds like. Pretty cool already with this. Chop remix, but since we're at four bars here, you can see how coarsely these chops are divided. I'm gonna try to lock in just one bar. Or two bars. See how it moves a little bit faster now? I like that. Very nice, just cut off some low end on that. Add some nice little reverb thing maybe. Yeah, let's make a beat. One thing to be wary of is make sure that this note, is, as it's looping around, it's not overlapping the first one. So if this one goes all the way out like that, for example, it would overlap the note on message, which is gonna confuse it a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can fix that in the future so you don't even need to think about that. But the easiest way is to just make sure your note doesn't overlap over there. <laughs> Very filthy. See, now you can have a lot of fun experimenting with samples in Mr. Sample. I hope you love it as much as I do. This child of mine, if you don't have it yet, please get it.